All right, guys, uh, I have a great problem at hand, which is that I have a 220 comments, so I'm not going to be able to get through all of them. Uh, but let's see what we can do. Uh, whether I liked your comment or not, whether I agreed with you or disagreed, I appreciate that you contributed. And this is part of how we're going to build a better, stronger, and more forward-thinking awareness as it applies to not only traditional Chinese martial arts, but just the folk fighting arts in general. Hey guys, this is Vincent Tung, The Wandering Warrior, and I'm going to be responding to, uh, to some of your comments. Uh, recently I made the video Killing Kung Fu, and uh, looks like you guys took really well to it, most of you guys. Uh, in any case, let's go down the list and, uh, and respond to these comments. So, let's see. Louise Bonnet, 3957, a lot of what you say resonates with me. I think the history and culture of Chinese martial arts are interesting and important to understand. Uh, let's see, David Rivera Fitness, David Rivera Fitness, uh, Kung Fu will never die in my heart. I feel like Chinese Kung Fu was the foundation of other martial arts. Back in New York, I would see Wing Chun guys spar boxers, Kyokushin guys, as to improve their Wing Chun. It would be nice if all Kung Fu practitioners would add this type of strategy to their system. Sparring, cross-training, getting experience. Uh, let's see, Miguel de Martin 3460. I'm only 71 years old, but I've seen a nosedive in the martial arts just in my lifetime. Challengers were met in back rooms, bare knuckle, full contact, till first blood was instituted to reduce trips to the hospital. Walking around with cracked ribs was not unusual. No contact matches, reduced matches to an elaborate game of tag. It also produced a generation of people afraid of getting hit. You can't be a fighter if you're afraid of getting hit. Now, I watch a lot of martial arts on YouTube, and I have to refrain from commenting. Endless routines involving situations that will never happen that way. Um, I can't speak to this guy who says he's only 71 years old and his experiences, but I can say that he's right. If you are not willing to fight, then you will not fight. You will not learn fighting. You are not experienced in fighting, right? As simple as that. I can definitely agree with that point. Instead of preserving the art, this is Ed7501. Through combat sport, like what Japan did, Ch China sought to preserve it through performance art. Japan had the right idea, in my opinion. Uh, Ed7501, I'd say that although that's not strictly true, the emphasis is there. While Japan does have a, a huge emphasis on kata, which in Chinese is taolu, uh, the Japanese did put a lot more work into creating combat sports. Uh, China created Sanda and also created this new version of uh, Shui Jiao, but uh, didn't really push it to the same degree at all. Um, missed opportunity there, that's for sure. Uh, Gabriel Guarino 5401, the focus of my doctoral research was the teaching of Taiji Chen in Brazil, with the focus on uh, Chen lineage challenges of his disciples, teach traditional fighting um, in contemporary context, where most people look for Chinese martial arts, especially Taiji Chen, not for fighting. My research got deep in many problems we talk about here. I'm a self-defense instructor teaching people who live in a very violent context in Brazil. True, violent. And truly believe Chinese martial arts are incredible in teaching how to fight in real scenarios. But as you pointed, that, that demands less taolu and more fighting itself. Well, all of this to say that our researchers has gotten the similar conclusions. I hope to publish things in English soon, enough to share. Great work, fellow. All right, uh, let's see. If Sanso from Sanso from Central Guoshu Institute from 1928 could have continued uh, developed until these days, uh, people would have a complete different view on Kung Fu. Bear in mind, all striking, striking, striking martial arts before 1928 were also underdeveloped. However, but solution, 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 a lot of typos. Now it's focusing on how to bring in different Kung Fu techniques into Sandai and adjust the rules accordingly. This is IPS or LPS 8966, eight days ago. All right, uh, I'd say maybe, maybe. Um, I think uh, Sanso, uh, from the Central Kuosu Institute, it was a good idea and a great testing ground for traditional martial arts. Uh, I think when you make it more dualistic and you put on the boxing gloves, you're going to get something closer to what Western boxing looks like today as opposed to what bare knuckle fighting with and without clothes on looked like back then. Uh, what you would prioritize, I guess, depends on your priorities, right? If you want uh, 
16 ounce gloves, sport fighters that are dueling each other, that's that's fine, that's that's what you want. And if you want uh, bare knuckle fighting, then you go in that direction. Uh, don't tell me you can't bare knuckle fight. Look, the Kyosha Kishin guys do it, and uh, Kudo is doing pretty good, and it's based off of Kyokushin. I don't want to hear this whole, you can't bare knuckle fight. Uh, let's see. Um, Mystic Formula 1485, growing up in the 80s in Los Angeles, I noticed that there are way more karate and ta taekwondo schools compared to kung fu schools. So even though I was in love with kung fu movies and I would have dove headfirst into kung fu, I ended up diving deep into kempo. If there were a lot more kung fu schools in America, that might have attracted many more Americans to practice kung fu. But yes, everything you presented in this video I think is totally true and I had, t had a ton to do with happen to kung fu over time. Well thought out presentation, much props. Appreciate that. Um, Actually, there were times when there were a lot of Kung Fu schools, but I will say that there are a lot of teachers that did prefer to keep things very uh, uh, low-key or more underground. Uh, that is definitely something that you see in the, the, the culture of it, uh, at least in the more modern expression. Um, let's see. What gives me hope for the... Uh, for Kung Fu returning to effectiveness is the HEMA, Historical European Martial Arts Movement. You have a martial art with little to no real sports outlet, there are competitions, but there are no professional level ones, and yet you have people genuinely in getting involved, devoting time and effort, and even studying historical sources just for their own sake without any hope or intentions of becoming a professional fighter. This is Jhor8113. Uh, agree and disagree. Uh, I would say HEMA is a great case study in the revival of martial arts, um, especially when there are people for whom it's their heritage and they want to revive the stuff, aka there's a lot of white boys getting into it, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think what is not quite accurate about it is there are many groups of Hemaists who uh, don't want to take this to a high level fighting degree, right? They, they don't want to be great fighters. They want to just kind of go through the plays, and kind of slowly work through stuff, and never really work on their athletics, never really work on their sparring, never really work on their cutting skill, so on and so forth, right? Um, they're not really training it to be martial. They're training it sort of their physical meets nerdy exploration of the past. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think it's hard to call yourself a martial artist or it's hard to say that you're really spending time practicing martial arts if you're not being uh, martial about it. Right? That, that's my opinion. I think, I think there's a lot of bullshit there too. Uh, but I think their ability to build something of a community is not bad. Uh, and I think that they have a lot of lessons that we can learn from. Um, so I would say they don't necessarily give me Personally, they don't get to necessarily give me hope, but they're a good case study, and you know they're 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 encountering some of the same pitfalls that some of the traditional martial arts have in an even shorter time, and I think that that uh, tells us that there's a lot of cultural, socioeconomic factors um, that play that that we got to keep in mind. Mm, Chatty, what's up, man? He says thumbnail fire. Uh, there's an online program that, uh, okay. Uh, Koreans never had a strong empty-handed martial arts history. That's Maharlika AWA. Uh, them, him and Manaz 97 are going at it. You know what? I don't really care. You guys do your own thing. Um, you guys both have some good points. But uh, you guys also kind of downplay the points that the other is making correctly a little bit. I don't really care. You guys have fun with that. Korean martial arts and their, uh, and their you know. That stuff. Uh, let's see. Shaolin LT, thanks for naming something many of us are thinking about. No problem, bro. Uh, Finger Laser 7. Closed door, praying mantis, singing, body train are deadly. Deadly for sure. Keep those doors always closed. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Uh, Ziggy Dog 5091. The combative aspects of traditional Chinese martial arts is preserved in the West and in Southeast Asia. It is rich with effective combatives that have been mostly lost in the mainland. Don't know if they're completely lost in the mainland. Mostly lost, sure, because most of the people on the mainland aren't practicing Kung Fu no more. Um, I don't know how well they're preserved in the West and Southeast Asia. I can say that there are people preserving it, but that's not the point of my video. The point is that the culture and the socioeconomic demand for that stuff 
is not quite there. And so even where it is being preserved, it's a fading culture, or it's fading in relevance. Some people are okay with that. Some people want that, right? Um, their mentality is such that I have this secret knowledge or whatever, and I'd rather a thousand people out there that want this thing can't get it uh, than to share it with them. I'd rather only share it with a couple people that are my own people. and uh, That works in a certain environment, and that's their choice, but that doesn't contribute to a better, better outcome, in my opinion. Uh, he responds to me saying, I'm not talking about the preservation for its sake alone, TCM particularly systems like Shinyi ba Baja, Baja, uh, believe it or not, Tai Chi were efficient, effective combat systems. They're useful for, to modern day practitioners, maybe not in the octagon, but if you're caught in a lot blah, 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 self-defense stuff. Um, they may be pragmatic systems, they're not being taught that way. So again, this goes back to uh, people not wanting to propagate effective fighting from the traditional martial arts. Uh, fuck them. Anyways. He's not wrong that there are legit people. I mentioned that in the video. He probably didn't get to that point in the video, so he probably thinks that I don't know that. Um, and that's his own fault. Let's see. Ving Dragon, I'm glad you touched on a sensitive topic, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Galen McDowell, 3823. Your points are well thought on presented well. I think you hit the nail on the head. The emphasis on forms or fighting functionality needs to definitely be emphasized. Agreed. This is the best explanation of the issues I've seen. It takes a lot of research and experience to understand what actually happened with these fighting systems. And most people have no clue to even begin learning about the history. From someone who has learned from a more combat focused teacher, I can't express enough thanks. That is Mr. C5200. Hey, I appreciate that. Um, this is why I put this shit out there. You know, this is both for the Kung Fu heads that have been really putting the work, and also the people that are kind of new to this stuff or have never done traditional Chinese martial arts but find it interesting. This is for you guys, right? Uh, for the people that believe in this stuff dying out or believe in going about things in a way where most people that get taught never get taught the real thing, um, you guys are part of the problem I'm talking about, right? So. That's a matter of perspective. Some people like the way things are headed. And again, for me, I don't. Uh, Boxer Rebellion and Mao with the Cultural Revolution especially changed it. Those are definitely factors. Um, I didn't not touch on those things, I guess. But uh, uh, there's a lot more to it, I think. Ah, let's see. Ziggy Dog 5091 again. He says Chinese martial arts community refuses to openly share our actual methods, even to longtime students. Over time, the practice becomes watered down. Add to that, people emphasize forms and no longer fight. Kima people, FMA people, boxers, grapplers, openly share information with each other and the public and free fight. I do agree with that. And, uh, you know, if you look at Chinese martial arts more from the mentality of guilds with uh, special knowledge, special, special techniques, special professional practices in a way, especially back when they're openly fighting a lot. That means that they're not going to want to share their information. This is not unusual for a lot of traditional, traditional Chinese martial arts uh, or traditional martial arts around the world, right? These, this was information you didn't share with everybody. That said, when you openly share ideas, improve upon them, assimilate with them into your system, and keep improving, you have more pe pe people. Uh, you have more people improving at a consistent rate. If you want more people to improve at a consistent rate, then don't do it that way. If you want a few people to have an advantage over people who don't know, then do it the way that they're doing, right? Uh, so, I mean, like I said, I don't know that there's right or wrong, but there's definitely right or wrong for me and what I'm, what I'm about, what I want to put on the world. Uh, great video, and that looks like Hanwei Oxtail Dao. Cool. Yep. Uh, after 10 years of TCM reforms, I knew I was missing something. You're dead wrong about three years of hard training. I learned more about actual fighting my first week than I had in all my previous training, um, et cetera, et cetera. Glock boxer. Uh, thanks for sharing your, your, uh, your experiences. Um, uh, Gray Steel Taiji 3940. Your point about use of boxing gloves and sanda is why we train slash play barehanded. Though loads of people comment, uh, quote unquote, put gloves on, bro. Uh, great video. Do both. Gloved, uh, ungloved. Uh, training gloves gives you certain benefits. 
uh, training bare knuckle gives you another set of benefits. Uh, I think in my in my experience and in my opinion, I think it's important to do both. Uh, da, 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 da. Ethan Noble, thank you. Good explanation of history. Okay. Uh, beautifully said. Uh, TCM as well as boxing, blah, 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 blah. But dogma and tradition just prevented people from simply questioning or even implementing some modern equipment and training methods. Uh, Mengarol Z2, thank you. Luis Barros, 1259, great video. You said it all. Unfortunately, there's always some that prefer to live delusional than try, test, and improve their fighting skills. Keep up the good work. Thanks, bro. Appreciate that. Uh, Mountain Goat Tai Chi. <laughs> what a name. Great breakdown. Thank you. Dragon 11C, sir, I just found you this morning, and this is the first video I've watched. Very well done. I practiced for 33 years. Japanese arts mostly, but Chinese as well, and I applaud you. This is my take on the martial arts then, and as we see it happening today, I've had the same discussion many times with myself with the same points you've made. I can say your comment about there are those who have used this in war still being out there is absolutely true. Um, and he speaks to his uh, experiences. I think you're absolutely correct in what you said, and I'm definitely going to share this with my class. Please keep up this kind of study and presentation as I look forward to more from you. So that's Dragon11C. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Navajodor, you a great commentary, well thought out and well said. Thanks. Uh, Christopher Hancock, 9041. I am glad I watched this. You rock. Karate by Jesse. Jesse Inkamp. Wow. Well said, my friend. Uh, very well said, brother. As a TCM practitioner, I couldn't agree more. These arts need to be preserved in their undiluted essence. Bless up, Kenny Ganga. Uh, undiluted is an interesting term. Uh, diluted versus undiluted. That might be a topic that I should get into. I don't know. Uh, you guys tell me. If you guys are interested in talking about what is diluted, undiluted, traditional, and traditional, we can talk about that. Uh, I guess, depending on what you mean by it, I care, slash don't care. Uh, but depending on what he means, that, that could be a very good point. Uh, J.T. Butler Jr., this is well conceived. I thank you for sharing your conclusions. I've been a student of several styles of Kung Fu, Tai Chi, and Qigong for almost 40 years, and your ideas sync with my experiences as a martial artist. Glad to know I'm not the only one. Uh, Kenny Klein, 8302, you are spot on with everything you said. Everything. Nice. Maz is Igmund7508. Very good video. I also studied Chinese martial arts for over 20 years. Everything you said was completely accurate. A lot of them just do not train fighting. My grandmaster in New York did make us fight, so we do Kung Fu a lot differently. Nice. Good. Uh, as an aside, I noticed that every time I bring up these type of topics, almost everybody that comments says that they fight. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Um, could be true, could be true, could be uh, the selection bias of the type of video and all that, or maybe they all do fight, or maybe they all are badasses, I don't know. Uh, Light Glyph Rasengan, I really appreciate this socio-economic, overall political and economic analysis of why we don't see enough TCMA being practiced with effectiveness in mind. This was great and expanded my view on the wider issues surrounding it, so thank you and keep up the great work. Great video, says Bruno1653. Thank you for your video and share your point of view. I live in Puerto Rico and Kung Fu, as the rest of the world, suffer from the same reputation. But what I found is a lack of knowledge of real combat scenarios and lack of sparring to test their abilities. Instead of a lot of ego, and I believe if you perform well in forms, and believe if you perform well in forms, you would likely spar well. Yeah, that's the age-old delusion, right? I think all martial arts community would be sharing our knowledge without barriers of which style or tradition is better, collect the best for each of us as trainers, teachers, sufu, etc., and share with the students with those venerable traditions, techniques that really work. But always would be people trying to monetize and dilute the knowledge. Please keep informing and sharing. That's uh, Axel Santiago, 5351. Uh, it sounds a little idealistic to me, man, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment. But uh, no, people won't always work together. Unfortunately, that's just what it is. And we talk about this all the time. This needs to be talked about more. Instant sub, sir. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Guillotine says, very good analysis. Thank you. Ok Otic. Okay. Uh, what a deep analysis in Usu. I've gained a lot from this. And I found it very educational. Good. 
even though I still believe that the internal material is widely misunderstood, but that is the nature of a lot of inner work. People judge a martial art from an outside perspective, looking in, etc., etc. It goes on to talk about how the internal martial arts are often diluted or misunderstood. Uh, I would agree, and I've had some exposure to the internal martial arts, although I don't currently quote-unquote practice one. Um, I think there are some useful things there. Uh, that might be something I'm willing to talk about. You guys let me know in the comments if you want to hear more about that. He ends by saying, man, great video, brother. Heart. All right, uh, at one night morte, another reason through my experience is part of the strength of Kung Fu is the secrecy. Many masters feel that if you know my technique, then you can f figure out how to defeat it. Many masters will also wait for the one disciple that never comes and the master dies with his art, while his regular students only received half the art. Yeah, that speaks to the kind of traditional mentality that I was talking about earlier. Uh, it worked for the context it was in. Uh, I, I don't think it serves us very well today, but you know, old habits die hard and uh, old people don't like to change their habits. So these things can die hard, I guess. Uh, KP89, Don you, oh, do you have any good books or info sources of any of this historical info or context? I'd definitely like to research Q a lot of this myself. All right, typos. Um, just to answer, just to read off what I answered him with or her with. Uh, Try Mar Chinese Martial Arts from Antiquity to the 21st Century by Peter A. Lorge. Uh, martial Arts Training Manuals by Brian Kennedy and Elizabeth Guo. And Violence in the Mingqing Era, uh, China, an overview by Willem T. Rowe. So those are some English sources that I could suggest. Past, last, 158. One of the biggest factors that renders Kung Fu ineffective is the lack of live sparring and changing it into health forms. Cool. Saying the things I already said in my video. Nice. Uh, Guo Tai Chi says, I think there are new opportunities nowadays with four ounce MMA slash Kyokushin gloves that the older Sanda generation did not have. I'm also aware of some Kung Fu schools systematizing their styles more in line with modern practices. However, it is still a big hill to climb. One last element is that uh, Kung Fu convention of fight can be very different than other styles. So many uh, opening moves presume that the match starts with crossed hands. Yes, I'm so glad that this guy mentioned that because you know what? There was a dueling meta. There was a meta for Kung Fu guys on the late time, on the race platform, to duke it out. However, it began very differently. It wasn't ding, going to touch gloves. It was usually going in and touching hands. This is not the only culture that did that. In fact, in uh, Bizayan, I believe in Cebuano, Escrima, a lot of times they would start off with a stick in the hand and cross their hands. So you didn't have to bridge the gap. You were already bridged, right? Uh, this leads to a different style of play as far as the duel, as far as the 1v1 fight goes. Now, if you get separated from that, then obviously you have to fight your way back in. But that's a bit different from having to go in blind, where you don't quite know your opponent yet, and you need to figure things out before you even get into striking range. It's a different feeling out process, and it's kinesthetic. Uh, I think there's still a place for that, and I think even just as a sport, that could be really cool. Uh, that's something I'm definitely going to do more and more with my own uh, students and training partners to showcase, but uh, that's a very good point. I think when the meta changes, uh, how we perceive things also changes. Mm. Jade Rebel. I feel like this perspective isn't shared enough, so thank you for sharing it. I love my Gongfu school. I love my Sifu. I love my siblings and the community at the school. That said, our Hangakun uh, curriculum has about five levels, and each level has about ten forms. Holy shit. Yeah, you guys are one of those bloated systems. Um, I'm not saying that those ten forms in each level doesn't have a use, but Hangar did not start out that complicated. <laughs> And he says, there are only four pillars or essential forms in Hangaku. Yeah, exactly. My point. Uh, I only have so many hours in the week to train martial arts, and I just can't spend it on training forms. Editing to add that for many students, that curriculum does suit their wants and needs. And that's totally cool. It's just not what I need. Yeah, Jade Rebel, I totally agree. That's not what I need either. Uh, I like forms up to a point, but not when they interfere with my ability to be conditioned and to uh, train for fighting. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, well, if you're more advanced, the forms condition you and train for fighting. 
Yeah, right. Uh, you can do forms for 10 years, and I can learn fighting for one year, and uh, one is more efficient at teaching you how to fight. It's learning how to fight. But the forms are good for many things adjacent to fighting. I don't disagree with that, and I've gotten a lot out of them. Ooh, strong like Lion 3. Yo, let's start a movement and post content of Open Gloves, Sanda, win by lay tie, push off or takedown, no points, no time limit, or hopefully applying rules of combat sambo, diversify the international fight sports, don't let Muay Thai and MMA steal all the limelight, hopefully one FC catches up, great video, sound content, and a lovely setup. Uh, cool, thanks man. Uh, I would love to see more of that. Um, but as I say, put up or shut up, right? So uh, I look forward to you putting up that stuff as well. Uh, Lucid Energy Arts, I appreciate your perspective. While I have no interest in fighting per se, I train for the martial skill. You're correct that the delusion is very compelling for most, but true Kung Fu is built over time through hard work. Um, hmm. If you have no interest in fighting per se and yet still train for martial skill, that's going to be rough. I think you should, you should fight a little bit. Otherwise, it's hard to be martial. Um, and it's easy to get delusional. So think about that. Not saying you are, just saying it's easy. Uh, Douglas Gomes Bueno, JW9, I-H-L-H. We have a lot of martial artists that never feel the adrenaline of a true fight. You can't be a fighter like that. You need to fight for real. In a context, you can be KO to gain experience. KP89, I am all this is slowly happening all over the world, specifically in first world countries. Seems like the conditions you listed are things that are definitely accelerating in China, but I see it in the US, depending on what neighborhood, cities, states you're in, of course. And from a distance, I've seen it in other countries too. Fascinating stiff. All right, typos again, but you know what? I agree. <laughs> alright guys uh, I have a great problem at hand which is that I have a 220 comments so I'm not going to be able to get through all of them uh, but let's see what we can do holy fuck Kung Fu practitioners need to start practicing the application of the techniques and do at least some very light sparring. It doesn't have to be kickboxing or MMA, but with enough resistance to see these techniques don't just magically work every time. But a big problem is many instructors don't know the practical application of these te their techniques because they were never allowed to question their master because it was disrespectful. Kyle Wavy 6206 Yeah, uh, these, are, these are things I mentioned in the video um, uh, towards the end of it, which a lot of you didn't get to, but it's okay. It's there in case you guys ever want to go back and learn some more. Um, yeah, I agree. They, they need a pressure test, and a lot of them don't. Hayes McGee, A01, this is a great discussion. I think it echoes across the globe and can be almost verbatim uh, be said about the majority of martial arts. Uh, however, I may offer a point of hope, and he talks about karate. Uh, there's like three paragraphs of this. I'm not going to read it to you guys, but I would just say that um, I agree. There is hope. Uh, karate is a little little closer to accessing that kind of stuff, but uh, as far as the material that's in Silat or uh, Chinese martial arts, I mean, it's there. People just have to put it out there, right? Expose it. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. Jared size more 3108. I wonder how different Sanda would be if they had MMA gloves and Swajia jackets. Probably more similar to Kudo. Well, I've done that, and uh, you guys can look it up. I've done a competition like that. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, so there's a lot of praise and there's a lot of people agreeing with me, but they're in their own words. So I'm going to skip through all of that because you guys can go through the comments and see all of that and like it and agree too. Uh, da, 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 da. I absolutely agree with these points. However, I think we also need to add Wu artists making King Fu Kung Fu look like a joke to profit. They aren't delusional. They know exactly what they're doing. That's in defense of the traditional MA. Wow, your name is exactly what you what you believe in. That's great. Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely a lot of con artists out there. Facts. Uh, da, da, da. 
Mm -hmm. Say it out loud for the people in the back. Blah, blah, blah. Sanda is awesome. Sanda, Sanda. Da, da, da. People look compared. People try to look good, not real fighting. <laughs> All seeing eye 401. Watch San Shou Sanda to know Chinese Kung Fu. The performance side is called Wushu. The fighting style is called San Shou or Sanda. Great fighting. You did not watch my video, so let's see. Da, 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 da. Simple, my teacher's way of explaining this is don't make it a job. If it's a job, you're not going to make the student better than you. Uh, you would have to leave uh, cru the crucial parts and you won't see it as a friendship or apprenticeship to make the art to a new level. That's because y'all got a starvation mindset and uh, don't uh, believe in making the next generation better than you and investing in the next generation as a way to profit and succeed in life but rather you believe in holding secret knowledge over other people and never letting them surpass you. Uh, Blue Moon Way. Um, that worked, again, in a particular context. I don't think that's the best way moving forward, but for all of you who would prefer that way, please continue doing that. And for people like me who would rather genuinely invest in the next generation and the people I teach, not be deceptive, things like that, uh, I'm just going to not do what you just said. Not into it. Not into it. Uh, da, 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 da. Lack of proper training. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. It depends on the fighter, not the style. Yeah, that's true, and also it doesn't answer anything or say anything. Probably didn't watch the whole video. It's all good. Um, if you want to find Chinese martial arts that prioritize combat and not performance, I look at the art of Gun Tao as practiced in the Melee Archipelago. Fun fact, the Gun Tao that goes, that's in the Melee Archipelago came from places like Fujian in Taiwan, Hokkien, Fujian. Uh, I do practice a style of Gun Tao. I'm well aware of that stuff. Um, and yeah, they, they kept it live and kicking for a little longer because they didn't have the cultural evolution and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Makes sense. Ah, uh, da, da, da. <sighs> okay, um, there's some stuff that I don't think I can get into right now, and there's a lot of other stuff that kind of agrees with me, or is a humble bragging about their own experiences, or they didn't watch the video, they just wanted to leave a comment, so it's not really insightful. Uh, let's see, Martial Health 4062, way too many McDojos, had that exact same broadsword, the sword is well designed, but the steel is cheap, okay. Um, Oh, I respect your frustration, but I agree with a lot of what you said. But I think glorifying the Qing Dynasty is a wrong starting point. They weren't a Chinese dynasty, but rather Manchu invaders. They suppressed a lot of Chinese martial traditions, which is why so many surviving Kung Fu schools have the residual maximum of Fan Qing Fu Ming, overthrow the Qing, restore the Ming. This suppression meant that many martial practices could not be done openly, but rather had to be concealed, which has a lasting impact on why so many Chinese systems seem fixated on esoterica. The century of humiliation under the Qing was what started the decline of Chinese culture, martial arts included, martial culture included, and the Cultural Revolution just finished it. This is Torsha Reynes. Um Cool. Uh, that's absolutely, absolutely wrong. Uh, so let me respond to that, and that will end this video. Uh, hey, thanks for sharing your thoughts. I want to address a few things you said. One, I didn't glorify the Qing Dynasty. I expressed that these systems and styles came from the violence of the Qing Dynasty, and they worked for the culture and the context of the time. Two, most martial arts were not actually suppressed by the Qing Dynasty. They needed martially trained people to staff the Green Standard Army. They also encouraged people to try for the military examinations, which set a standard for martial arts, etc., etc. So, my point is this. I'm not glorifying the Qing Dynasty, but these martial arts came out of the Qing Dynasty. That is the context they came from. Those are facts. I don't care what your narrative you're trying to push is, that's the fact. Number two, 
it doesn't matter if these were Man Manchu invaders. They set up a, an administration that worked and brought China to a level of prosperity that had not seen for a long time. Uh, don't believe it? Again, look to the facts, right? Uh, they suppress a lot of Chinese martial traditions. They suppress some, especially if they, they were being used by insurgents like the Tian Di Hui. Whether you agree with the triads or not, they were an insurgency group. It is what it is. Again, those are facts. But they provided the kind of conditions that had a martial arts economy for bodyguards, for trainers, for people fighting on the Lei Tai and gathering students. Uh, that's, that's a vibrant economy that pays for martial arts and pays for martial arts to be better and for them to prove themselves in fighting. So you're wrong on that point. And the Qing Dynasty also had the military exams to uh, gain officers for their Green Standard Army, right? And uh, that there, there were pretty uh, rigorous uh, requirements for the exams, meaning that they were encouraging Han Chinese people to engage in athletics and martial arts to be able to staff the Green Standard Army. What was that, that for? It was a military police force to police uh, the peoples of the empire, including Han Chinese people. So of course they wanted martially capable, they wanted militarized people that were serving them. But again, these are militarized people. Also, speaking of the imperial examinations, um, you know, a lot of Cantonese systems like to like to flaunt the whole Fan Qing Fu Ming, the whole like we were anti-Manchu and all that stuff. And that's actually pretty late in the dynasty. Uh, a lot of the Cantonese elites were putting out a lot of successful passers of Chinese of the Qing Dynasty uh, military exams during the during the duration of the empire. So clearly, they were plugged in and incentivized to support the empire for most of its existence. So anyways, get your facts right. You, you don't really you don't really know what you're talking about. Um, what you're talking about is a particular perspective that's been overblown and popularized, especially because the successors to the Qing Dynasty uh, are very big into Han ethno-nationalism. Uh, and I'll leave that to you guys. Anyways, I appreciate everybody that commented. Uh, you guys are definitely helping me out, and I really like the conversation that's happening here. Some of you guys are responding to each other in the comment section, which is what I love to see. I'm going to try doing more of these, you know, responding to your comments, because you guys deserve it. You guys put in the time and effort to, you know, give me feedback, give each other things to think about, and that's what I want. Uh, whether I liked your comment or not, whether I agreed with you or disagreed, I appreciate that you contributed, and... This is part of how we're going to build a better, stronger, and more forward-thinking awareness as it applies to not only traditional Chinese martial arts, but just the folk fighting arts in general, which, as you know, are starting to fade or go extinct. So, in any case, as always, thank you for joining me on my journey. I salute yours. Peace.